Somebody wanted to see the protector pad before I got out of here. Uh, get a little involved with the horses and forget about the product. <laughs> At any rate, the protective shields that I showed you earlier, here and here, are built into the protector pad. So they're inside here. You can see that stitching going down a line. If you could see it, which you can't, you can see some of the slots. This is a porous material. It's a nylon knitting. It's actually a mesh, like a fishnet on the top. And inside is a hollow spacer material, which is nice and squishy. It never loses its squish. It's not foam. It's a million loops of little monofilament fishing line. And each loop is caught top and bottom in a polyester weave. So nothing gets wet in that layer. It's hollow. You can blow smoke through it. You can hold it up and see through it in the sunlight. And you squish it, it always bounces back, those little loops. There's millions of little loops in here. It's kind of a pain because you can't let it out at the edge because the little you cut a little loop and it'll stick out. And it's kind of like <laughs> stiff little whiskers. So we have to keep it inside the pad. This is a cutter version of the protector. And I have all the balance shims in this right now. When you get one, this label says front of saddle here. Place pad so label is just back of shoulder. Cover label with front of saddle. <laughs> this is your, uh, your saddling for somebody who doesn't know. There's a lot of people that don't know. And uh, what it does is it puts that bit of extension. Let me pull the balance shims out. See, they slip in and out pretty easy. It puts that bit of extension, the two and a half inches we want to work as a flexible lever right here. It puts it up over the shoulder of the horse. So I'm putting front of saddle here, labels, so it's just back of shoulder. This label needs to be just at the back of the shoulder. The front of the saddle goes right there. It will scoot your saddle out of the way of that horse's natural movement using the power of the horse to do it. The flexible lever in front actually holds your saddle back in a downhill you add these balance shims to pick it up and to stop the pinch with the regular tree that you saw when I put on this horse while ago. The stair step action, and one of the things, Sergio, can you find a set of rear shims on side? I do mark these on one, two, and three. They're marked where they go to each other so you can get them out of the horse trailer two months later and know what's what. On side, off side. This is the on side rear shims. And I just had Sergio hand them to me. I've got one in here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it in there too. It's in there nice and tight. But people say, well, if I use front shims, won't I create bridging? Or if I use, you want me to use front and rear shims? for a level-backed horse, you know, big straight horse? Won't I create bridging? And I say, I hope so. Because then the horse has room to lift his back. All of these saddle trees, when they turn that bar angle out and you saw the pinching at the top of the tree, all of those trees have too much curve front to rear. Because as soon as they turn a bar out, Sergio, hand me the uh, tree over there, the headlock fox tree. I think it's all the way over, Sergio, it's all the way over there, in between the saddles. Yeah. As soon as they turn the bars out, it creates something they were not thinking about, or they wouldn't do it. This bar, like this, is going to be pretty straight front to rear and have room for the back to come up. But when the bar is placed at a flat angle instead of the steeper angle, 
it creates curve in the tree front to rear because it has little twist. What I showed you earlier where you twist from flat in the rear to very steep in the front is not there. It's almost a flat piece of wood, little shape. When I use front and rear shims, I've created bridging. The nice thing about the protector shields is they will carry a 250 or even 300 pound person's weight without any contact in the middle and do it without soaring horse, without too, press, too much pressure. But see right here, the back comes up to the saddle. So by doing this, you encourage the horse to reach with hindquarters. You encourage him to operate naturally the way he was made to operate, even with a rider on, and that's to bring his back up, tighten his stomach, put his head down, go to work. Balance shims also do that. You use the rear shims not to lift the saddle in the rear, but on a tree that does not have good contact in the rear, and you can follow the, I already have the rear shims in this pad, and you can follow the horse while the rider's on at a walk, slip your hand up under the saddle in the rear and get your fingers in up to here, you need rear balance shims because all the pressure is right here and up here. And every stride that goes down in the front as the back comes up more in the middle. Put the balance shims in the rear in that situation, take pressure off the middle of the back, the horse relaxes. You also take a little of the stirrup strap pressure out of there when you have the front and rear shims in and room for things to pick up. And here's what I wasn't looking at. Right now we have front and rear shims in place. No shims in the pad on this side. I just pulled them out for you to look at. The shims are in on this side. And a while ago, I put an extra set of rear shims in. So I was a full inch thick, but the back still came up. It's showing you how much curves in the tree and how much you need to give room for the back to come up. So balance shims, Nobody wants to mess with them in this industry. Not with something as sophisticated as the protective shields underneath and graduating them and alleviating the pinch right up here with them, so on. Nobody's figured it out, but nobody wants to talk customer to customer and tell them how to use the balance shims to even out the horse, one-sidedness of the horse or how to balance the rider, because there is no way you can say that because this is flat right here, that when you're riding, you're gonna be balanced. The only way you can check balance is when you are riding and the feel to your own anatomy when you're in a saddle. That's the only way you can check balance. So it's not too simple that you see instructions on many websites it's just not that simple. But it is the most important of many things. Okay, this is a 3234. That's just more than this horse can take. It's past the point of his hips. You really need a short saddle for many horses. The shorter the saddle, the easier it is to saddle any horse. A, B, C, principle of saddling. So this is for a 16 and 17 inch saddle. It's a 32, 34. That means it's 32 here to here, 34 here to here. It's very adaptable. We get it up on the shoulder where it says there. We've got a little room. That's the point of the hip. You're gonna have a little bit of rubbing here. I have found that with the rear shims in, it takes the pressure off here from anything usually let you get by with it, but this is the max length of pad you can use for this horse. When somebody comes in with a 17-inch saddle, it's 29 inches long, and says, I have rubbing back here at the rear. What can you do? I tell them, well, I don't think there's anything I can do. I suggest you pray. 
Either that or get a short saddle that's still a 17 inch seat. So this is the limitations we deal with when it comes to saddles and horses. They don't, this horse has a reasonable length of back, but that 34 inch pad was just all that it could take.